You're about to hear sagacious debates from curious minds seeking complex answers to our world's greatest problems. No, but you are going to hear a lot of cuss words. A lot. You've been warned. Chelsea, what fucking game are you playing? Because I've seen it's like a breakout looking sort of kind of thing. I've seen you playing it a couple times over the course of the day, and I'm dying to know what it is. Bricks and balls. HR! <laughs> Ricks and balls. Yes, Please explain. Sorry, this one's Bricks Ball Crusher. Oh, Bricks Balls <laughs> Crusher! HR! Reach in there and grab my wallet. It's the one with bad motherfucker on one side and the nice guys on business on the other. The Nice Guys podcast is sort of social. Demented and sad, but social. Right? And now, broadcasting from the hatchback of a 72 Ford Pinto. Broadcasting from a secret bunker underneath Fort McHenry. Broadcasting from the abandoned food court at the White Flint Mall. Broadcasting live from their mother's basement. Broadcasting from no closer than 100 yards from their court-mandated distance from Tim Ferriss. Broadcasting from the back room of El Pollo Hermanos. It's Los Chicos de Niza por Negocios. Three days a week, they're able to hold it together. This is not one of those days. Welcome to Fuckery with the Nice Guys. Adults need not apply. No interviews, lots of ranting, and they sometimes stumble onto something useful. Go figure. Now it's time for Nice Guys Fuckery with the kings of fuckery themselves. Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. So what, where, where would I be exactly, Strickland, if I was enjoying either a Navy Grog, a Vic Scrog, a Curious George, or a Funky Monkey? I think you're either on a cruise ship or <laughs> you are here at the Purple Orchid Lounge in El Segundo, California. Welcome back, welcome back. My name is Strickland Bonner. On the other side of the microphone, Mr. Doug Sandler. I never understand why why uh, podcasters, even if they're a thousand episodes in, they don't introduce themselves at the beginning of the episodes because... For sure, there's going to be somebody new, brand new, listening to our show that has never listened before. And if they are listening for the first time and it is a Friday episode, we just have really two words to say, and they are... We're sorry. <laughs> we are really sorry. We're really sorry. We're really sorry. Since we've only started the Friday episodes with the two of us back again recently, there may be people that have been listening to the Monday and Wednesday interviews and thinking, what the hell is going on on Fridays? And to that, we can say, we're sorry. Yeah. So uh, let's just set the scene so everybody knows. So we, uh, yes, it is true. We are at the Purple Orchid. We are in El Segundo, California, uh, my hometown. Where, well, not my hometown. I guess my hometown. Was yeah, it, it is, is now. It my, my transplanted hometown yeah, where I live. Hometown, yeah. I've lived here for about a year and a half. It is the um, the Mayberry of the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> and, Where's Andy? Yeah, Andy. Well, Floyd's Barbershop. Floyd's Barbershop is actually right down the street. <laughs> Uh, where you can get uh, right across the street here is the Esso station, and you can get gas for three dollars and ninety nine cents a gallon. Wow! For yeah, it's pretty bad. I don't, pretty bad. Why would you need to get gas? I don't. I actually ride my bike everywhere. No, okay. <laughs> or, or walk. Or okay, walk. fair enough. So to set the scene for you. So we have uh, the entire Turnkey team here. We did our weekend retreat. We usually do a once or twice a year retreat, depending on where we're where we're doing it. So this. At this point, we're at El Segundo, and we're at the, uh, again, the Purple Orchid. Uh, there is, um, Chelsea is here. She is our show notes writer, Marjorie, our director of operations. Christopher, our social media saint. But he doesn't go by social media saint anymore. He, to us, he's always going to be the social media saint. Okay. Uh, JJ Flazane's also known as my... Um, better half. My better half. Thank you. Jimmy, our, our uh, editing team. And uh, I can't. I'm still trying to figure out what you or I do. <laughs> we got it all covered right here. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, we pay. That's right. We sign the checks. Uh, that is very good. That's it's good. important. It's an. It's a small but important job. So we are sitting in front of uh, a flaming concoction and a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about Marjorie like that. That's not nice. Oh, no. Oh, Marjorie has just been shot. outed on the nice guys. Cheap shot. <laughs> outing a few times on the nice guys. Maybe. That's very possible. So we are sitting in front of, I believe that is the Curious George. Is I think we got we, the yeah, Curious, Curious George. George. Yeah. It's really it is tasty. A, uh, a purple orchid creation, a banana and rum in this smooth blended drink. Now, the interesting part about this drink is it's not just a single drink. It's a drink that is served in a volcano. Right. <laughs> a flame right in the center. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I watched the bar pen, bar, bar, bar member, the bartender pour yeah. that drink. Yeah, there is much more alcohol than there is other stuff. I love that. That's good. And it's a drink enough for well five, but there's only three straws. So How'd you, me, happen? and Jimmy are going to try to. Yeah, JJ will be will be driving home tonight, right after dinner. Fortunately, we are walking distance from our Airbnb over on uh, Virginia Avenue in El Segundo, which is a really nice place. It's so El Segundo, cool. if you've never been here, nice guy community, if you've never been to L.A., it is uh, actually a mile and a half or now right where we're sitting, probably about a half a mile from the from the beach, the Pacific Ocean. Mm-hmm. And, and, and closer to the airport than that even. <laughs> very close to the airport for those quick getaways that you would. That you, that you may need. How often do the planes fly over? So often you won't even notice. <laughs> it's exactly, exactly right. So you might be wondering, as you're listening to this, well, why is the entire turnkey team together? Is hey, there a, Doug, why is the entire turnkey team together? Is there a mutiny on board? And I would say... Mutiny? Mutiny? No, definitely no mutiny. Where would that come from? No. Is there a mutiny on board? The entire turnkey team get together so that they could, they could kill you and take over the show. What? No, that's not happening. I, where Obviously, did mutiny that's... come into the conversation? Mutiny on the bounty. Okay. Not happening? I hope not. Not today. Hold on. Marjorie has a few words to say. You've watched Pirates of the Caribbean too many times. I've had so many things to drink. Well, has anyone I mean, ever noticed that it's Caribbean when you go on a vacation, but it's Pirates, Pirates of, of the, the Caribbean. Caribbean when it's the movie? I don't know. This is not relevant. I, originally I'm from the, originally from the East Coast, I call it the Caribbean. What do you call it? But it's not... You haven't watched Pirates of Penzance too often? No. <laughs> the very model of a major merchant general? Water. water. I do no, say water. water is a is a Baltimore thing. Water. So, error. 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 What do you say? I say water. That says error. Error. And when I say bagel, apparently I say bagel weird. Bagel? Bagel. bagel. Orange, orange. I, I say bagel, and I am Jewish, and I should know. <laughs> exactly how it said. So can we do introductions? Oh, yeah. That's exactly what I was heading I think next. we should do introductions. So we're going to pass the microphone around, and you can meet everybody on... Got to be careful. The straws will get in the, the way. The straws team. Get in the way. We cannot let the straws touch the flame. Don't cross the streams. They will burn. I'm first going to pass the mic to... And she's shaking her head already. I was just getting ready to say, I'm going to pass the mic to Chelsea, who probably won't speak much because she's kind of shy and quiet. And as soon as I said pass the mic, she's like, no. Chelsea, should I introduce you? Hi, my name's Chelsea. And I do all the show note writing. Um, and oh, the show notes writer, eh? <laughs> oh. And I live, oh. In, I live near Boise, Idaho. And, um, Why are you being so quiet? I'm really, well, if I'm talking in the Chelsea voice, I can't do it loudly. It's hard to do loudly. And I really like, um, I like the Avengers. Um, and um, I don't know what else to say about Chelsea. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Chelsea. I am not that interesting. I am from Idaho, and I have a cat that plays fetch. But she does a hell of a job writing show notes for most of the shows. And by the way, I completely disagree with her assertion that she's not very interesting. I just want to make that public statement. I'm Marjorie. I'm... A Comic-Con. You go to Comic-Con often? No. (laughs) Is it? Okay. I don't use these. Marjorie, you have a show of your very own. I do, but now I use a Yeti like a big girl. use 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 your show voice. My show voice. My name is Marjorie. I am director of operations. I also do project management. I am a lesbian and I'm single <laughs> and approaching wow. a more and more successful entrepreneur every day. So <laughs> if you have any lovely ladies out there, you can put in your application at turnkeypodcast.com <laughs> forward slash Marjorie. And you're complaining about me. And you. I know how to do shit on the website, so I'm actually going to make that happen. Hold on a second. I, I actually, when I started the show, I was really genuinely thinking about saying, hi, my name is Doug Sandler. I'm host of the Nice Guys on Business podcast, and I am also a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that wasn't going to work so well with Marjorie sitting here. So Marjorie, if you, if you can do stuff on the website with what you just said, is your profile going to change to something like you just said? Like, Hey, by the way, I am a lesbian and I, I am single. So if you happen to be in the LA area, just reach out. Just have to take the I, I'd be okay with that, by the way. I I'm mean, just now asking. that I said this on an episode that I know is going to be published and listened to by at least several thousand people, <laughs> I'm gonna have to follow through. Shit. Well, if you ask, <laughs> somebody's nice, gonna have to check in on this. 
give your website address, please, and your own show? Website? <laughs> okay, so my personal show is A Sustainable Mind, where I interview environmental leaders all over the world. You can also go to asustainablemind.com and message me there. Again, single and looking for a wife. You can also not just a relationship Grindr. that's going to waste my fucking time. You can also, <laughs> you can also go to grinder.com backslash Marjorie. That's for show boys. To me. That's for the boys. Oh, is there trick. one for the girls? I don't know. It's called her.com, but there's a lot of stuff on there that is also not safe for work. I'm not at liberty to say. Mm, <laughs> we're going to pass it on to Christopher now. Uh, yes, we're just going to pretend that didn't happen. I'm going to edit it out. I'm, I'm not going to edit it out. Why would you edit that, you you edit edit that out? We don't edit anything. It requires Strick. a lot of work, Strickland. I know. That would mean work. We're not going to do that. I just signed checks. I don't do anything else for this company. Welcome back. Welcome back, Funkin' fans. My name is Chris Morales. On the other side of the microphone, at the very least at this moment, is Strickland Bonner. And yes, I've memorized the script so well because I think I'm the only person who actually listens to the product. True. Considering that I have to market it. Uh, <laughs> so I'm only doing it for my job, not out of uh, voluntary action. Um, but in any case, uh, I am the social media director, not the social media saint. There was a small stint where that was actually my official title. I uh, realized they didn't want to offend any people, and I still don't. It's pretty much uh, the two guys that normally do host the show that do all the offending. Uh, but in any case, uh, I'm really happy to be here. I'm actually um, born and raised from here, from Los Angeles. I actually, uh, to join the rest of the team, came from the opposite side of the city. I live towards more towards the northeast L.A. area. Um, it was funny because I took a lift over, and um, the woman saw that, the driver, she saw that we were going 53 minutes uh, southwest, I think, from where I live. And she says, oh, so you're going to the airport? I'm like, close. close. About, about a mile off of the airport, close. So she's like, oh, so not vacation? I'm like, no, it's a staycation, you know, seeing the rest of the team. Um, beautiful thing is, you know, my parents aren't even here. Uh, they're actually right now vacationing, finishing up in Mexico City. Um, so I kind of left without them knowing. Only my sister knows that I'm here, but a little bit little on the social media posts are seen that right. I am here. We will not kill you, so you'll get home <laughs> safely, we promise. Um, but otherwise, uh, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I can actually drink with you guys, and I could publicly say that. I am 21 now. Yay! <laughs> we start them young. How long have you been on the on the turnkey team, Christopher? Uh, I hey, I think I'm the most tenured person besides you guys. A uh, little bit over two years. Uh, again, credit to uh, Lou Diamond for being a reject. Uh, <laughs> passed on, passed on to the opportunity originally. Ended up here. Uh, we are actually doing some of his social media stuff now. Check it out if you haven't already. That's Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. Uh, but otherwise, a lot of fun being here. Social media saint. We don't care if we offend anybody. That is his title. JJ, baby, would you please make sure you promote the podcast masterclass? Sure, provided that this airs before that happens. Uh, Doug, I'm JJ Flazane. This is going to like air tomorrow. <laughs> Next Friday. No, it's no. not. A week from tomorrow. A week from tomorrow. Week from yesterday. yesterday. Uh, I'm JJ Flazane. I'm the host of several shows. Doug Sandler and I are an item, if you don't already know that. And we're doing a podcast masterclass. It is By the way, free. JJ, everybody knows that. I know. The whole you know, fucking world knows that because Doug... Every opportunity he gets, he makes sure to tell everybody, hey, by the way, you see that that super hot chick over there? That's my girlfriend, okay? Just want to make it clear. That's well, I did stop listening to the better. show uh, a while ago, so I wasn't sure how often he actually talked about me. So, okay, so you know who I am. We're doing a podcast masterclass on January 25th in L.A. It is a limited seating event. You can go to turnkeypodcast.com forward slash masterclass to sign up. It is uh, free, but you do put down a seat deposit to reserve your space since it's limited. And we're just going to talk to all the people who want to actually – profit from having a podcast so if you're interested check that out i'm happy to be in invited to the drink fest and the uh fuck off fuck off fest if you will of, uh, of what's happening today i'm no i know that sounded bad sorry christopher i'm only one drink in i haven't caught up yet so my brain isn't quite firing the same but um shot for jj please yeah, I'm a little slower today, but thank you all for the support of the nice guys on business, and I'm going to pass it on since I'm not part of the team, but I appreciate I appreciate being here. Hey, Doug, we're sponsoring this this masterclass too, right? Yeah, of course we are. Why haven't you brought it up and mentioned it and promoted it before? I, I think we have. I just maybe forgot completely about it until now. Hey, guys, great segue. <laughs> The most junior member of our team, but uh, certainly by no means the least talented, maybe one of the more talented ones on our squad, Jimmy. I don't know about that. <laughs> 
So, so. <laughs> I do know about that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I am the newest member of Turnkey and happy to be here. Uh, I am from Montana, and so I'm definitely enjoying this weather. It's way better than where I came from. It was snowing the night that I left. So, yeah, excited to be here. I don't know. Uh, where are you from? What do you do? Like, not, not state-wise, but wh what were you doing right before you came to Turnkey? I mean, aside from the so, male prostitute uh, thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> His stripper name is Hercules. No, you weren't supposed to find that out. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I uh, worked at a furniture store for years. And before that, I lived in China for a couple years. And... Uh, like to play music. If you had and shown up on time tonight, Doug, you would know that. He was talking Ooh. about it earlier. I just want, just to my defense, I have a very formal relationship with time. And just so everybody knows, <laughs> everybody knows this, this probably was not my doing that we were not on time. I was at my house around 10 of four and I changed and I was ready to go. And I said, when, when will you be ready to go? And what did you say? Are you seriously blaming me for not for you not being here at the Tiki Bar on time? At 4 o'clock? Yeah. Yes, let's talk about that, shall we? I wasn't going to bring it up. Because, by the way, it definitely sounds like he's blaming you, JJ. A hundred percent. All right, JJ, what are you doing about it? So here's how I handle that in my relationship coaching. If, <laughs> if you know you need to be somewhere at a specific time, you say, hey, I'm going to come pick you up at 4. I need to be there by 4.15. You left out the part where you needed to be somewhere at a specific exact time. And then if I would have said, you know what, I'm not going to be ready, why don't you go ahead of me and we'll just bring two cars. It wasn't that important to me. So then don't oh, so blame you, me. So you, you're saying you don't have such a formal relationship with time because it sounded to me like what you just said was, I have a very formal relationship with time. I was planning on being here at four, but JJ held me up. That's what it sounded like. I could have been here at four. When I walked in the door, she was not ready to go. She was still in her robe and her hair was wet. It sounded to me like you said, I could have been here at four, but JJ held me up. I, I'll go with that. Yeah, I would. I would say that. I would say that. So you're blaming her for your lack of communication skills. Okay. <laughs> I will accept that responsibility. I will willingly accept that responsibility. I would. I would have been on time if it was just me. So you're blaming her for you your lack of I'm communication skills. You said I'm going to come skills. get you at four. You didn't say I have to be there at four. Well, if I was going to come and get you at four, what time would it? What time should you be ready? If I was going to come and get you at four. I'm coming to get you at four. That's means, it. That's means all said. to you. What does that mean to you? How do you interpret, I am going to come and get you at four? This is where, oh, this okay, is no, where this is men are from Mars, women are from Venus. No, no, what no, does no, it no, mean no. if I say, I'm going to get you at four? Does that mean at four o'clock when I come and get you? You you just you can take as okay, much time as you want. It could mean lots of things. It could oh. mean I'm going to show up at four. Did I? Did it could I mean feel, I'm going to be to the house by four. Did I appear irritated at any point? Not at all. Did I? Do I care that you were that you were beyond four o'clock when I, I was coming no to get you at four o'clock? Until you just hold on. Let's me back for up for a late. second. If let's just say that you and I didn't know each other and we were just going on a date. Yeah. And we just were at the beginning stages of a date. Okay. And I say I am going to come and get you at four. When I come to the house at 4 o'clock, are you going to be in robe with wet hair and not having been dressed yet? No, I'd be ready. Uh, okay, well, that's, that's all I needed to know. But you also told me before you left this morning that when you come back, you were going to change and rest before you got ready to go. So you did not say, I need to be present at I, a specific time. I, uh, I, wait, 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 hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Game changer. I got there at 10 up 4, which gave me enough time to change, even lay down for a moment, and get up and still get dressed and be ready at 4 o'clock. Wasn't I ready at 4 o'clock? I wasn't watching the time because I wasn't told what time we had to be somewhere. I didn't tell you that because I didn't. we just didn't go there. I said, I'm coming to get you at 4 o'clock. So go ahead, I just want to intervene. JJ, your show is uh, Women, Men, and Relationships, right? Yes. It sounds like it's not one of them, one of the many popular ones. The other one popular one is uh, Spirit, Purpose, and Energy, right? I just wanted to say, this sounds like an uncensored version, uncensored episode of Women, Men, and Relationships, The Real this World. Sounds, this sounds, this oh, sounds yeah, like this is censor. a great topic for the Women, Men, and Relationships show, because 
if I say I'm coming to get you at four o'clock and I walk in the door and you're not ready, I could have immediately said to you as soon as I walk in the door, why aren't you ready? It's time to go. That's why I thought in my mind you said just text me before you are on your way so that way you know when to be ready. I'm on my way home. I texted you as I'm on my way home. Ten minutes later, five minutes later, because it was a short drive, I walk in the door and you're wet hair and robe. So I'm thinking, well, she's not going to be ready. Now, I could have texted Strickland, which is probably my responsibility, could have texted Strickland and said, hey, we're not going to be on time. I have a formal relationship with time. JJ doesn't. Yes, I do. No, you really don't. No, no, wait a minute. You did. You know, you didn't have to add. You could have just said, "I have a former relationship with time. I'm not going to be on time." You didn't have to add the whole JJ's in. But I have to admit, when you said, "If if your communication was, I'm picking you up at four, I do believe it is a a fair assumption to say we're leaving at four. Except then JJ added. You told me earlier you're going to come home, change, and take a sleep. Even if you're there at 10 till, it takes more than 10 minutes to change and take a quick nap. So I kind of... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I did everything I needed to do when I walked in the door and was still ready to go. Again, presumptions. If, if you walk in at 10 till, right, and, you, and I know ahead of time that you're going to change and... What did you say? Take a nap? Yeah. Take, take a, a rest. rest? Which he did. He laid down. Ten minutes is not ample time to change and take a rest. Now you're judging how long it takes me to take a rest. <laughs> okay. I don't agree. So uh, there are two there are two points here. There's right. the time I'm picking you up and the time we need to be somewhere. Okay. You did will, not tell me we were you, expecting to be claim, somewhere at will a you certain claim time. No responsibility, none. You'll claim no responsibility. Because I wasn't told all? we had to be somewhere okay. at a certain time. I will time. claim I will claim I will claim a little bit of responsibility and that I probably should have said not only am I picking you up but we need to be there at four o'clock okay that's a whole different ball game well I have to kind of side with Doug on that if Doug had never said I'm gonna come home change and take a rest if somebody's but he me, did if so well if he had not until until I was on my way home no you told me that in the morning okay. I'm gonna come back I'm gonna change and I'm gonna rest before we go if he had, I am not going to win if if I'm 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 being my Libra self and playing the judge and seeing both sides, okay, the way I would weigh this out, if Doug had never made that comment, if somebody says I'm picking you up at four, I think it's a fair presumption I agree with you. I that agree. you would leave it four. But Be the comment that you four. made earlier in the day muddies the water quite a bit. I'm willing to accept all of the responsibility if that will get us beyond this point right now. It's fine. I don't care. It really doesn't matter to me. I I know I know how my relationship with time is. I know a little bit about how I feel JJ's relationship with time is. And I feel comfortable enough saying, I know what I meant. It was interpreted differently. I apologize. If I did not communicate that clearly can enough. We, can we agree that there's a difference between what time you're coming and what time we're expected to be somewhere? My presence is expected at this time is different JJ, than I'm coming to get you at a time. mile away. It doesn't we're matter. a mile away. Okay, so then... I'll give you this. If I said I'm going to come and get you at four and we were supposed to be here at four, then I would have given you maybe till five after four to, to get from the house to here. But the fact that we arrived at 425, that to me was that was not a formal relationship with time. If I'm going to say I'm going to come and get you at four o'clock, then you should be ready at four o'clock. You even asked me to, to forewarn you. I thought you were asking me to forewarn you so you could be ready to walk out the door. I didn't know what door. time we had to meet everybody. Doesn't matter. I apologize, and you I love you. You did not communicate that, effectively the time we were expected to be sitting so, in our seats. So you won't take responsibility for, for any level of miscommunication between the two of us. You'll just, you'll just take no responsibility for this at all. None at all? That, that to me, is a little bit... Wait. Wait, Marjorie just said, give a percentage of level of responsibility okay, that you're so willing I guess to take. I could have asked you, what time are we expected? And I didn't ask that question. Uh, well, okay, but, but I think Marjorie's question offered, is fair. Marjorie's question is fair. What level of responsibility are you willing to accept? Well, of course, it's 50%. You are. That is very good. But you're willing. Of yeah, I didn't accept. I didn't expect I that. Didn't expect that. I. I uh, <laughs> no. Wait, give her the microphone. Give her the mic. <laughs> if, if, if I were JJ in this instance, 25% max, 
Doug, I'm sorry, you're in the wrong. You should have been more specific. You should have sent her a calendar invite. You should have been, hey, look, we all- We already learned details aren't his strong skill. Right, we all took the disc assessment over the last week. We had our little- uh, Of which Doug did not read the instructions. (laughs) Did not read the instructions at all. Oh, so here's a perfect example. <laughs> and two of the things that came up in Doug's disc assessment is, number one, not big on the details for Doug, right? And second of all, Doug does, don't blame Doug. Don't lay blame on Doug because he may get a bit defensive. So um, looking at both of those two things, we are going to copy this episode as a joint cross episode of Men, Women, and Relationships as well. <laughs> And then we're going to move on from this fucking subject onto something far more interesting. Okay. Wait, I got to get my microphone yes, back. Yes, because this is not a couples counseling session. No. Although I very much enjoy this banter because I know both of these individuals fairly well. And I'm just like, I'm going to make some I know, popcorn. I, I know both I'm of these I'm going to kick perps. my feet up. <laughs> and it's like me watching a TV show or, a, you know, a Hallmark movie. Oh, boys are better than Hallmark This movie. is, this is... <laughs> so, this is so typical of every communica- of every bit of communication that is miscommunication in our relationship. I am always thinking in my mind, okay, how should I have said this differently so that it is understood? Then I will get the rules given to me, and then I will not understand the rules to be able to follow them again. Okay. Okay, so I don't want to get political, but... What's going on with Speaker Pelosi is she's waiting for the rules. She's waiting for the rules, Doug, right? So so you wait for the rules. You did not wait. How how the hell did you go? How did you go from I'm not going to get political to what Speaker Pelosi Pelosi says? I said I don't. Did I say I don't typically get political? I don't know what I fucking said. I've had a few drinks. Have another drink, Marjorie. (laughs) Yes, Marjorie will be having another drink because I am at the end of this one. Doug? Marjorie's almost ready for karaoke. (laughs) (laughs) I am three away from karaoke. Thank you very much. Doug, I can tell you the rules in a relationship. Rule number one, the woman makes all the rules. Rule number two, if you don't like the rules, see rule number one. (laughs) Are there any relationship to the uh, the rules of rock and roll, Strickland? No, no relationship (laughs) whatsoever. (laughs) Completely different. Oh, my God. But this... This is every exchange that go, goes awry in our house. I'm thinking, okay, how should I have said this differently? And it seems like every time there is a new answer, and, I, and it always comes down to, oh, wait a minute, I did not follow the rule book on that one. Okay, I'm going to attempt an uncomfortable segue. Chelsea, what fucking game are you playing? Because se- it's like a breakout-looking sort of kind of thing. I've seen you playing it a couple times over the course of the day, and I'm dying Isn't to know that what it Candy is. Crusher? Bricks and Balls. What's it called? Bricks and Balls. HR! <laughs> <laughs> Bricks and balls. Yes, Please explain. Oh, bricks and balls. Yeah, bricks and balls. Or sorry, this one's bricks ball crusher. Oh, bricks balls <laughs> crusher. Angel. I've played that, but bricks not on the phone. Balls crusher. Wow. Okay. Wow. I, I guess I it's by the makers of Candy Crusher or something like I don't that. Know, but <laughs> there are straws going everywhere I'm feeling, at this table. There's I'm a lot of straws. I'm wondering if this game is much more popular with women than it is with men. As the only triple minority on the team, I am HR. I am off vacation, but you know what? It's okay. Ball crusher, it's fine. Wait, I got it. I got the. I got the trio. The triple minor. The triple minority is that what you said? Yeah. Black. Black. Lesbian. Lesbian. Woman. Woman. So you are like every loan application that goes good. You're like you can get. You can sign your name and get a loan for credit, can't you? No. Absolutely not. Well, you should. We can we can hire seventy five more white guys and not have to worry <laughs> right, about. We have, we, got, we have the triple threat. Although, if you guys make me half owner plus one percent, fifty one percent, then uh, we can qualify. Wow, for minority owned minority business. Minority owned status, women owned status, LGBT owned status. For local government contracts in both the city and county of Los Angeles, not we, we saying gotta, that you all should promote. Wait, me or Strickland, anything, we've got to we got to figure this out. How we can give her fifty one percent ownership yet only one percent of the voting rights? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think we talked about this before. <laughs> how do we do? How do we do that? Because I want all of those markets. 
Yeah, well, you know, she has a company that can get all of those markets and then feed turnkey. But it just wait, wait, wait! She's got a microphone because <laughs> I'm a couple years behind on filing my taxes. Whoops! Oh does that, no! Does that disqualify me as a as a good? It doesn't disqualify. It doesn't disqualify you, Marjorie. But Marjorie, but what it does is it gives the IRS the specific target on where they need to go now to well, get. Hey, <laughs> they, they, they would only be getting like a thousand dollars out of me, so. They're, they're, they're not coming after me because I'm not a big fan. I, I have never known the IRS bonds. to turn down a thousand dollars. Have you ever known them to turn down a thousand dollars? I've I've not, but I'm I'm picturing all of our lesbian listeners in the L.A. area, and they heard the part before. They were starting to type an email to reach out to Marjorie, and then they heard that, and they're like, No, nah, nah, maybe, maybe not. I think you may. You, would you like me to edit that out, Marjorie? Sure. Wait, you're going to do some work editing? No, it's not going to no, happen. It's not I'm gonna... sorry. You know, you know what part of my disc assessment was? Don't promise things that I'm not going to follow up on. So, Marjorie, I'm not going to edit that. Here's the thing. Strick is going to post it, and then I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to cut that part out, and then I'm wow. going to republish the episode before it actually, like, officially publishes, and then this part will be cut out. Where the fuck are all of our fans? That's what I want to know. Let's talk about that. What does she want to know? Where are all our lesbian fans in the L.A. area? No, 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 not lesbian fans, just regular fans that we invited out between 4 and 6. It is 5.30 p.m. We are at the end of this drinking jaunt. And no one has showed up. To Marjorie, were you actually expecting? Segue, so, I mean, I they've didn't. heard the Friday episodes. Do you actually expect somebody to show up after hearing the Friday episode? I mean, at least one half sober drunk motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> we do have one drink, drunk half drunk. It. That's you. That's you. Christopher promoted it today on social media, though, and offered it to anybody. Oh, right. So, like, not only we put it on our social media, which we didn't really expect any fucking feedback from. Thank you, Funkin' fucking fans, okay, for not doing anything. Christopher puts it out to his guy, all of his friends, like, come and get a free drink. All you got to do is show up, and nobody shows up. You know what, Strick? If we're still able to make a, a mid-six-figure income from it, I really don't care if anybody shows up or not. Mm. So what you're saying is, as long as the check clears, we don't really give a <laughs> right, shit. Right, yeah, exactly, that's a good, exactly. We, you, you can't cash a download. Wait, what would you say, JJ? More for us. More That's right. drinks for us. And right. they're really good guys. Oh my god, my too. head is already pounding. I'm already hung over and I haven't even stopped yet. Damn, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <sighs> I feel How far are we in? I can't read that. How far are in 20, are we? Well, it's too close. Hold on. Twenty thirty minutes in. You know well, what? We're gonna stop now. We may uh, we'll come, come back. back at Rock and Brews. Ooh, good idea. If you don't hear from us again, we're back in uh, Austin, Texas, and in El Segundo. If you do hear us, we are going to be back at a noisy restaurant having dinner. I think you'll hear from us again. Okay. All right. In the meantime, Steve O'Brien, uh. <laughs> go ahead and take us out of here. The Nice Guys on Business are professional podcasters. Please do not try this at home. It may seem simple, kids, but lots of people get hurt in the process. Void where prohibited, including Mexico, Puerto Rico, Fredonia, or your in-laws. The nice guys on business are not responsible for any claims of liability or any guarantee that these two morons know what they're talking about. There is no promise that being nice to people will help your business, but calling people assholes, dumb, incontinent fuckwads will definitely lose you business. For any and all claims, shit in one hand and wish in the other, and see which one fills up first. Thank you for listening to the Nice Guys on Business podcast. I'm Steve O'Brien.